everybody. It is Cammie with the Sarasota Dog Salon. And I made a video uh, about a month ago that I never got around to editing. And I'm glad that I didn't because I have a handful of new things that I want to add to it. So this video, and if you uh, and if you like this video, if you found it informative, even if you didn't and you just want to you know, watch or whatever, uh, make sure that you hit the like button, the subscribe button, and if you have any questions for me that you want you want me to answer, touch base on, um, you know, comment them, and I'm happy to answer your questions. So what I want to talk about um, primarily today is accidents that happen in the grooming salon, and a lot of the time we don't even know about the accidents um, because we don't consider them accidents, if that makes sense. So. Um, for example, clipper burn and hot spots. Those are two things that happen after you get home, not in the salon, but we get blamed for, for not telling the owner or for not knowing. Um, clipper burn is not necessarily known as clipper burn anymore because um, the new technology in our clippers, most groomers use, um, they don't burn, they don't get hot, um, they don't scrape the skin. So um, it's clipper irritation more than clipper burn. Um, so if a dog is matted in its sanitary area or if it's just not used to that area being shaved, um, it's going to lick the area or scratch. So if it's a sanitary area, they're gonna lick it. Um, if it's an armpit, they're gonna scratch it. Uh, if it's, you know, in between their eyes right here where we shave out the corners, they're gonna rub them. And so when it happens in the salon, it's not something that shows itself right away. Clipper burn is something that shows up later. And we know as humans, um, it's the same thing as like a razor burn, but not with a razor. Um, so you may see it at home when the dog has already licked it, scratched it, and it's red and irritated and really angry. And when they left the salon, it wasn't that way. So um, my number one recommendation for things like clipper irritation is to call your groomer right away because they most likely did not know that it even happened. But we need to know because if they are sensitive to clipper irritation, it will most likely happen again the next time because they're already susceptible to that irritation. Uh, some dogs just have more sensitive skin than others. Um, some dogs may even have like grass allergies that it just irritates that much more. But the bottom line is, is if we don't know about it, we can't fix it for the next time. And most of the time with clipper irritation, we're not gonna know about it, but you should call and tell us about it if it does happen because it does happen and it's not something that we do on purpose. Um, but if a dog is matted in a certain area, like an armpit or a sanitary area, we see it every day. We have to go just that much shorter to get under the mat, which is really close to the skin and can cause clipper irritation. It's not something we do intentionally, but the mat has to come out and that's the only way to do it. So next to clipper irritation are hot spots. Hot spots, um, hot spots happen when, I'm gonna try to get out of the sun here a little bit. Um, hot spots happen when there's a perfect combination of bacteria and moisture. So if your dog sheds, right, they have an undercoat and they come to us for a de-shed treatment. What can happen is when we pull out all of that undercoat with our tools and we blow it out with our blow dryer, it it opens those pores up. And what happens is, in some cases, those open pores, it irritates the dog, right? So then they're like scratching at it a little bit or licking the area. And then that provides the moisture and the bacteria, not only the bacteria from their mouth, but the bacteria that's already on their skin. Um, so it's a breeding ground for a hot spot. And it's not something that a groomer does on purpose but it can happen. Um, and, and, you know, if you're gonna point fingers and place blame, sometimes if, um, if a bather in a grooming salon does not wash the dog 
as well as they could or if they don't rinse the dog as well as they could, the shampoo buildup or the bacteria that's already there um, can cause a breeding ground for a hot spot. So uh, could it be the cause of a groomer or a bather? Possibly. Um, and maybe a percentage of the time, but there's a, a, another percentage of the time that could just be that it opened up the pores and there was just that chance of bacteria, your dog got irritated, they started licking at it, and then uh, a hot spot doubles overnight. So, a hot spot, clipper irritation, those two things are things that we get blamed for a lot. Um, people lose clients over them, I'm sure that I have over the years, and it's not something we do intentionally. Um, and most of the time people won't even call us to let us know, they'll just go somewhere else. And that's just kind of, uh, unfortunately, as much as we like the dogs and want to keep them and groom them for the rest of their lives, um, you know, people get a bad taste in their mouth. I'm just asking that you maybe give, give your groomer or us another chance if something like that does happen, call us, let us know, that way we can fix it for the next time. Um, or if you don't come back, at least you let us know and we can fix it moving forward. Um, and so, cause we, you know, we network with other groomers in the area also. Uh, we know a lot of them. We all work kind of the same and we all deal with the same issues. As far as nicks, cuts, um, things of things like that, those are things that we all dread. Um, a groomer never, ever wants to hurt a dog. They're the reason we're in this business. In fact, we prefer dogs over people. That's just who we are. Um, and so when we hurt a dog, we almost, most of the time, uh, we're more affected than the dog is. Um, half the time the dogs barely, um, barely yelp or, you know, uh, show any signs of distress and that kind of thing. So. Now, luckily, we're, my salon is very fortunate. Um, we have only had a, like a handful of, of Nick accidents like that. Um, none of them have ever warranted a trip to the emergency vet. Most of the time, uh, the, the ones that have happened in my salon uh, were, were small enough that, you know, we, we stopped the little bit of bleeding that there was. We called the owner right away, let them know, hey, if you want to take them to the vet, give them a head. Here's a chance to give them a heads up that you're on your way um, just to have it look, you know, whatever the case may be. So um, anyway, my point is, is we work with moving dogs. They move, they bite, they wiggle. We do our best not to do anything, but we do our best to be as professional as we can. We do our best to keep the dogs comfortable in any situation like that. We try to let you know as soon as possible so that you can call and let your vet know as soon as possible. Um, and it's never intentional and we try to handle it as professional as possible. And I think that that is something that groomers want all of their clients to understand and our our biggest fear is losing the dog or losing the client and not because of the money it's just because this is our passion this is the business we're in um, and so if something happens in the salon that you're not happy about um, if something happens after you get home if you think that we didn't do right by you whether it's us or any other groomer out there you need to make a phone call and you need to talk to somebody about it because I can assure you that nothing is ever intentional um, any problem can be talked about resolved and a lot of the times the vets blame us for things when it's not necessarily our fault um, you know we may have created you know the uh, the breeding ground for whatever happened um, dogs that get hair in their eyes and they rub their eyes and then they scratch them um, that's another thing that happens so I just want to put it all out there if you have questions if you think something uh, needs to be answered please comment let me know I'm happy to go over any type of situation with you um, and thank you for watching today hopefully I answered some questions already and um, hopefully moving forward we can all just get along professionally and understand that these are living animals that we work with every day um, and shit's gonna happen and sometimes we can't prevent it all we can do is handle it the best way possible for the dog for the client um, for the best for everybody moving forward so Anyway, that's my talk for the day. Like, subscribe, ask questions. I'm happy to answer. If I left something out, you know, let me know. But 
I'll see you soon. Thank you.